Welcome back, survivors. I'm the Survival This, and we return to Ecosystem, where today we're going to go digging. We are going to look at doing that trench I was talking about, or the pit, or whatever. Oh, see, it's ten. Yeah, ten's the largest brush size we can do. So we're going to see about going way, way, way down. I can also see things are slowing down a little bit more. That's probably because of both the amount of plant life and the animal life that's in the map now. We're going to work our way down, 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 deep. I think that's deep enough. So I want to see if I can even, like, dig this out to a really big, like, underground and underwater network. It makes me wonder if there's even anything I can like put down here that would survive or be able to start surviving. Oh, we actually have a number of species maturing, which is good to know, so... Hopefully that means they'll keep doing better. Actually, I wonder what happens if I even slow it down. Maybe it's... Oh yeah, it seems like it's a bit smoother now too. Okay, so we just keep going with this. I kind of wish there was almost like a brush intensity so that way... It was a bit easier to do a lot larger terraforming. See how that's looking. Well, that's quite. Actually, I wonder if. I kind of tempted to want to even enclose that so. It looks narrow. It looks like basically. The tiniest little gap into. Something like this. And we'll try making this bigger still. Okay, so that should be all right there. Now, is there anything that would actually do okay down here? Like, these actually would add to the ecosystem's health put in here. Is there anything else? I want to see. The mushrooms actually were one that could add 92... Oh, jeez. Okay, just the game did a little autosave there. But these things actually add a lot of eco health, putting them down. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try to make this like a super paradise down here, and see if anything actually like tries getting in here to adapt and make use of it. And maybe what I'll do, just to almost, like, hide that more... Uh, can I do bull kelp? I can. It's actually going to add a lot to this area. Almost, like, disguise it within the forest like that. Can I put anything around it as well? No, um, not overly. It seems like we kind of hit our threshold for plant life around here. Yeah, so we got that. Yeah. Unfortunately, this area, something would have expanded a bit more. Okay, so we'll leave that for a while here, and then come back and see what changes that might have brought. Oh, no, I want to go up. 
There we go. Pop our way out of there. Now, if we've done a trench, we might as well also try making a mountain. Or at least, like, more mountain than this area is. Well, it looks like maybe some of the plant life that was here might have kind of died away. Okay, so let's take... This looks like a pretty barren sort of area. Um, do, do, do. What do we want to do here? Muddy sand, grass, tall dark grass, tall grass. Let's do dark rock. And increase the brush size. And bring this around to make a great big mountain. Make this really big and tall, and then what we'll do is maybe look at putting a bunch of little caverns or caves or stuff like that all along and around it there. Just let this build right up. There we go, let it keep getting up there. Yeah, maybe just run a small smoothing pass over it. Okay, so we got ourselves our mountain made. Let's just reduce the brush size down now. There we go. And just do small caverns like this all over the place. There we go. Just work and do stuff like that. Not sure what effect these will really have or if anything might take in them, but we did seem to be able to get the mushrooms to go all right to that one little area when we were doing stuff like this, so we'll see what comes of this. If nothing else, it's a nice way to show off all the like uh terraforming tools that you're given and what you can really do with them. Okay, so that should be that alright. And you know, let's look at what we have, so. Alcorn coral, waving hand coral, ooh, giant kelp, I kind of like the sound of that, because that would be good for kelp forest. Precious coral, oh, you know, let's get the, yeah, we'll get those, okay. Let me see about, what can we do here, so. Yeah, so put the mushrooms in that one, put them in that one. Actually, kind of hard to see some of the caverns that I put in here. Okay, looks like that's as many as we can put, because the rest are starting to run into that uh, species already there, or plant already there. Put some sea anemones on here. Looks like we'll put them on this side. No, oh, no, looks like that might actually be the end of those. Put some plankton there. I don't want to use anything like plant life on the mound, just because I feel like that would completely... Nope, Leviathan mature. I thought we already had them. I want to try to make this more like a coral... What's this one? Miscellaneous, okay. Make it a little bit of a different sort of mountain, or quite a bit different to everywhere else we've already had stuff at. So 
So we can let those all grow and mature for a while on our mountain here and see what that might turn into in time. Our pit. Oh, actually, we have things going into the pit right now. Looks like some, some of our eels might actually be making this place a bit of a home for themselves. Because you are fifth generation. So I guess that explains why you seem to be wiggling a bit more than the others. You're understanding your limb... Well, I shouldn't say understanding, but... Some of the nerves are working a bit more. This guy is the one that seems to be doing a bit better. We've got this place established. Uh, everybody's just kind of chilling out and resting here. We've got the valley area here. Surprised not too much has really, like, gone down closer to the bottom to... Well, no, oh, there are some things, I suppose. The Fwong. Interesting name for it, but these guys seem to be... Oh, no, you're Daniel Bala. Okay, so the Daniel Bala seem to be the ones that are working a little more to the seabed there. But yeah, there's not too much really looks like it's established there. I'm going to increase the speed again. Uh, nothing too much has changed around here either. Like, I thought we might have seen a little bit more of, like, uh, forager species that had laid territory here. I wonder if we should try putting down an apex somewhere. The only problem with that is I need to find an area that has a lot of foragers, I feel like, established, and I don't super know if we have anywhere quite like that. Like, it says we've got all kinds of fish species in that here, like, almost a hundred just the miscellaneous species. 11, 15, 26, yeah, probably around 200 or more of total, like, fish all about. I want to try editing. Because I can load something, can't I? Dependent, independent, oh, um. Okay. Okay, so maybe what I gotta do is I gotta take one of you and save DNA, follow, edit creature. There we go. I wanna change you instead of a. Uh, let's do an apex and instead of poly, let's do mono. Let's just see what those changes bring about. I don't know if all of them. Okay, no, that's something. Hmm. So I want to try to do it to all species going forward, but I don't know if that will be possible. It seems like all it does is really... It doesn't seem like there's another way to really be able to adjust them that much. And I guess we'll go for a little bit more, so... The precious coral sounds like something that we could try using. Sea... oh. Well, seagrass actually looks like a pretty good one to get. That should just, like, help us establish pretty easily. Yeah, we're just going to put down this everywhere, really. Like, all it does is just give you plus 20 wherever you put it down. It doesn't have anything too much for its requirements, so... Okay, that's good there. How is our mountain doing? Okay, it's looking a bit more... ...settled than that. Actually, where was our... Yeah, here's our pit. I want to try using the precious coral down here.
because this should be like a perfect area for it. Oh, and we actually have one of our Eleviathans sticking around in here. Okay, so we got our pit main. Yeah, these guys actually might be using this almost as their home to hunt out of. Oh, and you can see all the bull kelp that we put down is spread around, so it does look like this little ring that almost hides it within. And there should be plenty of food for the predators we got, so that should be that area kind of settled. I just don't know what I should do about this little thing here. Like, we got it set up. I wonder if I should put a forager species down. We'll try one and see what comes of it. Then over here we got... Well, this area's expanded a little bit. Although, surprisingly enough, I thought this was an area I put down foragers. We don't seem to have anything here now. We'll try that again and see if something will establish there. But we're slowly building up and rounding out the map a bit more. We've got uh, more to... Oh, actually, looks like we might be losing the Gernprow here. Considering this is the last member of the species, I'm just going to take care of that myself. The Amavon. I'm going to get rid of those myself as well. Just because they were, again, they were one that kind of came in just on their own from the generation. So we'll try to sort of call the herd a little bit and see what might take their place. Because there's a lot of miscellaneous species that still have not seemed to, like, gotten their foothold or established quite yet. I think we've gotten an interesting mix of different little regions so far. We'll see what comes of the mountain area, although it seems like... It might have actually attracted... Oh, the Cusklings are actually a predator. I didn't realize that. They don't exactly have the face that screams predator to me, but... I mean, they do what they'll do. So right now, you're just searching around. Oh, I keep forgetting spaces pause. Very handy if you can remember that. Actually, what are you? You almost look like something I had tried. Oh, never mind. You're definitely not something I tried making. What the heck happened to you? Almost looks like you got hit by a truck or something. Oh, we got a little... Oh, it's a scooter! You guys are still around. Ooh, although you're not doing too hot. Only five of them left. I guess our first ones have kind of finally been phased out. Okay, and the new species joining the sort of rank is the Relic, which is unfortunately... Oh my god, what the heck happened to you? You definitely get some really, really strange looks from for certain fish. I think I brought the Scudar into the world. I think I might be the one who decides to bring them out of it. They're an interesting experiment that seem to do all right to start with, but... Seems like they aren't really doing too much more. So we'll get rid of those, and we'll see what else we've got. So, the Camthalba are a new one. And they... It's actually kind of understanding how to swim rather well. You are a forager, which is good. So you guys are at eight. The Cuskling are predators. And you're just kind of going around doing your own thing right now. It says you're hunting, so what are you actually hunting? Yeah, not really getting any info on that. Okay. The Eraltro are another predator. Now I'm starting to notice a trend. We might have too many predators. 
Catamosia are another predator. Why are they so... Okay, there's a forager. So we got the Razrays. The Relic, which is another forager, which is good. I just have to... See where it exactly is. So it's... Somewhere around here? I don't know what's going on with that one. Okay, here's one. Okay, yeah, you're the one that looks like you basically got thrown into a meat grinder and just... Spent a few through too many passes there. The Elviathans, which were the one we made. They seem to be holding up okay, but those are another predator. The Iramons, which are a forager. Which is basically a big white whale, in all, almost. Are they all... Yeah, they... Okay, not all of them are the white, but... Looks like they seem to have... Sort of understanding themselves. And then we have the Daniola, which are. or Daniel Bala, which are foragers. So it seems like we basically have a one to one ratio. Which I don't know if we really want that. Actually, are you. no, no, you're foragers. So we actually kind of need to keep foragers. Almost seems like. I feel like the ratio should be two or three foragers to every predator species, but. Seems like we somehow got a one-to-one -one mix on that. And there's also all kinds of miscellaneous that are still... ...kind of doing their own thing. So basically just... ...we'll have to let them keep going, but we've gotten ourselves a few areas established. So we've got the sort of valley pass in here, which... Oh, there are a few things here, but not as much as I figured would kind of settle in this area. I thought this would be kind of a hotbed for stuff, but it doesn't really turn, seem to turn out that way. We've got our pit, which is uh, somewhere around here. Maybe up here? Okay, yeah, here's our pit here. And seems... Eh, nothing's really down in there, like animal life, but we do have a lot of stuff up and around it. Like, we've got a number of Elviathans, and a number of predator species, too. Hmm. And then we did establish this big area, which, hard to say if anything will really take around to it or not, but, I mean, at least we can try and play around. That's the big point right now, is that you can have your fun and play around with stuff. So we'll probably just leave this episode of Ecosystem right here. And if you guys have any ideas of what you would like to see kind of put in, adjusted, things to try, let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to try to show off what I can of Ecosystem in the series. If you did like the video, be sure to give us a like, and if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to leave everything in the comments right down below. Until I see you all in the next video, though, survivors, please remember, as always, to take care and stay alive.